My name is Sage Lewis and I am a film and television composer. I scored South by Southwest selection Operator starring Martin Starr and Mae Whitman. The movie is a dark comedy about an artificial intelligence programmer named Joe who is developing an interactive voice response system for a healthcare company and is designing it off his wife Emily's empathetic personality. Joe has a lot of panic attacks throughout the film. How do you compose a score to evoke anxiety attacks? Nothing seemed both subtle or menacing enough. In the process of being stumped, I accidentally bumped an audio cable onto my desk, and it created an audio feedback loop that was sent through an eventide space reverb pedal. It made me feel panicky, so I recorded more and placed it under the seat. Later, I understood why it fit so beautifully. The writer and producer Sharon explained to me that she and the director Logan had been researching the psychology of panic attacks and learned that panic attacks are psycho-emotional feedback loops where one bad thought leads to even worse thoughts, cycling into a downward spiral of exponentially dark and irrational perceptions. It made total sense why an audio feedback loop evokes the same emotion of Joe's panic. It is a small sound that gets caught in a cycle of being amplified and then re-amplified again and again repeatedly at the speed of sound. Because it is out of control, it has a stressful feeling and usually causes people to panic just to try to make it go away. Music made by controlling feedback is a genre of music that I love very much called noise. When I was a kid, I was also a fan of how Jimi Hendrix used guitar feedback in his music. I got together with my friend Brendan, a guitarist and composer who spent all night recording different colors of audio feedback with guitars, synthesizers, microphones, amplifiers, and effects pedals. This gave us a wide palette of analog noise that I could use musically to express Joe's range of anxiety. Got a bunch of pedals here. I have a microtonal guitar just for extra wonkiness. We're going through here first, uh, the signal gets distorted. This is a crazy distortion pedal. I'm going to turn it off because I'll blow your ears out. Goes through this, and then um, just a bunch of delay and reverb. The, the chorus speed, so you can get these kind of undulating, wavering sounds. If you turn that up, that'll turn the speed up. Uh, same with this. This kind of does the same thing. Um, delay pedals, when you turn them up, uh, the delay time, you get kind of a pitch shift kind of effect. That's pretty much it. So most of the, the cool sounds come from just the, the feedback, the signal being played back out of the speaker and then back through the guitar. It creates a feedback loop and gets totally crazy pretty fast. And once we had a bunch of recordings, I went in and sort of chopped it up um, into sections that you know sounded good, sounded usable. And then we overlaid it on uh, this little sampling engine that is in Ableton Live. So this is where you can decide the length of the sample. You could have it loop um, over itself so you sort of have a repeating texture. What these green lines represent are just individual samples and you can move them around so they, they play on different octaves. Um, so in other words, if I play this key right here, it's going to trigger the sample up there. and. Uh, you know, we have a bunch of different textures available. Um, so here's some of that high stuff. Once this was set up, you know, both Sage and I had a copy of it and we just sort of played it as an instrument. It was sort of like our custom little uh, synthesizer feedback engine. And sometimes it's totally in your face. Uh, sometimes it's more, uh, you know, texture in the background playing along with other instruments. In the mix, we added more delays and reverb to soften its harshness. Then I took the music to the sound designer, Nathan, who added his own audio transformations. What we did is we came up with a method where we can sort of take these like musical swells, basically pitching them down to like they're just sort of above the threshold of hearing, so they're almost subliminal. And then we're running it through uh, a chain of effects, some plugins that do something called cross synthesis, where it sort of crosses it with some other sort of rumbling sounds um, and then and then we're putting it into this big whole room reverb that's actually like a algorithm of a subway tunnel ultimately that's what becomes this kind of sound effect which is really just a, a, a generated from the actual feedback to balance Joe's panic I use singing bowls to create an empathetic superpower leitmotif for Joe's wife Emily you can hear these empathy cues when Emily thoughtfully listens and offers helpful suggestions to complaints at her hotel customer service job. And also when she calms Joe from his panic attacks by lying on him like a weighted blanket. Singing bowls are used in Tibetan Buddhism to focus the mind with a simple, natural sine wave. A sine wave is the opposite of audio feedback noise because it is a wave in its simplest, most distilled and controlled state. Its sonic purity calms the mind, which is why people use it for meditation. So it is a perfect timbre to use to evoke in the audience exactly what is happening emotionally to the characters. 
When the virtual replica of Emily uses empathy to calm Joe, we recreated the same acoustics of a natural singing bowl from scratch with our analog modular synthesizer to have an electronic counterpart to Emily's natural qualities. I started with a very basic sine wave and then again introduced some, some modulation into that sine wave. Uh, uh, again, starting from this complex oscillator up here and then using a bit of modulation in its wave shaping section over here to uh, uh, sort of move a little bit away from a sine wave in kind of a, uh, an oscillating, uh, uh, repeating shape to get that same effect of the finger running around the edge of a bowl uh, or a glass, which generally gets a, a, a pretty pure sine wave, but then the reverberation of the finger against the glass can get these sort of uh, slightly harsher, a little bit more complex wave shapes as a result. And so we're using, we're sort of uh, uh, emulating that effect using one oscillator to uh, modulate another one very slightly. So these are some of the subtle ways of how music helps tell the many layers of the story in the movie Operator. Thank you.